Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Ascension on this, the fourth Sunday of Lent. My name is Cynthia Roys. The Church of the Ascension is a missionary discipleship parish. Each of us is a missionary disciple to the extent that we have encountered the love of God in Christ Jesus. We willingly share that experience by living out our mission to proclaim the word, celebrate the Eucharist, and serve the local community. Today's Mass is being streamed live. We are united today both in person and with our online family. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Daniel, assisted by Deacon Jim. The Mass intention for this liturgy is for the deceased, Mark Simonis. The Beatty family will be bringing up the gifts. We ask that you kindly silence your cell phones at this time. The parish is offering several ways to enhance your Lenten season, including soup and sacrament, Eucharistic adoration, and our fish fry on April 8th. Tickets for the fish fry are on sale after this mass and 10, 10.30 a.m. before the 12.30 p.m. today and next week. The full Lenten schedule is found in the bulletin, Friday emails, and on the church website. On Wednesday, March 30th, the Justice and Peace Committee invites you to the next forum on the environment, caring for our home, at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary with guest speaker, Father John Grace. The, the diocesan appeal continues. Our parish goal is $68,670. To date, donate, donations and pledges from Ascension total almost $30,000. Please consider supporting this important campaign. It benefits us at Ascension and our entire diocese. An informational meeting for a summer trip to Father Daniel's homeland in Tanzania will be held next Sunday, April 3rd, at 9.30 a.m., upstairs in St. Teresa's room. Beach Bag Assembly is held in the ACC at 10.30 this Sunday. Please join Social Ministry to help feed local school children. And now, a word about our upcoming 50th anniversary events. Thank you, Cynthia. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I come to you this morning as a member of our 50th anniversary committee. Uh, there's so much going on in the parish and so much going on during uh, Lent and Easter tide that we wanted to let you know some details about the two big events in May so that you can plan your own calendars and come and uh, enjoy these events with the rest of the Ascension family. The first event is the dedication of the Mary Garden on Sunday, May 1st. Immediately after the 1230 Mass, uh, Father will invite everyone here to join him out at the Mary Garden. Um, and you know that's been newly planted. So many of you have been part of that terrific effort. Uh, and also to see the newly erected statue honoring our Blessed Mother. Following the dedication prayers and the singing of some hymns, many of our young children will assemble around the statue and one of them will crown Mary with a garland of flowers. In honor of our Blessed Mother, uh, and immediately following the crowning, there will be a delicious reception at the pavilion, which is being hosted by the Filipino community here at, at Ascension. Now, I know you all love Ponson and Lumpy and so much more, and Mario has assured me that there will be dancing. It'll be a wonderful day, so really, don't miss that. The second event will be our, the, the uh, penultimate moment of our 50th year, our 50th anniversary, our 50th anniversary Mass. Now, I, I know that you all know that the Mass will be on Sunday, May 22nd at 10 a.m., right? May 22nd? You got that? May 22nd. 10 a.m., not 10.30. And I'm sure you know that there will be outdoors on our back 40 under a mammoth tent. And I know that you know that Bishop Nestout uh, will be the celebrant. But did you know that there will also be 1,000 seats under that tent? Surely the largest outdoor liturgy in our region in years, and maybe ever. Did you know that our Knights of Columbus will lead the procession in dress in their full regalia? Surely something to see, just add Ed. Where, where is Ed? It's here someplace. Um, 
Did you know that our liturgy ministry and our choir and our wonderful musicians have been planning and practicing religiously, no pun intended, for this outdoor liturgy? Just ask Diane or John Sokolowski. Did you know that all the parishioners and the special guests are being asked to wear white? And did you know that our children are going to wear blue and will lead the procession out at the end of Mass, uh, launching our next 50 years? Afterwards, of course, it wouldn't be ascension if we didn't have a, a reception in the ACC. And you know, we've really never had an opportunity for the entire Ascension family to proclaim, celebrate together on a joyous, on a joyous occasion. Uh, sometimes on sad occasions, we seem to all come together, but this is a joyous occasion, so we can celebrate. I know the Steffens will be there, um, and I encourage you to bring your family, children, friends, grandchildren, guys you meet in the 7-Eleven, tell them to come on down. Uh, as you know, uh, that will be the only Mass that Sunday. Originally, we were not planning on having a vigil Mass on the Saturday, but we realized that there are some parishioners who cannot make it on Sunday, and so there will be a vigil Mass. But as Father Daniel said to us at the parish council meeting last week, uh, he hopes that all of you, and especially here at this wonderful Mass, with your wonderful spirit and terrific voices, will fill that tent uh, with the spirit of ascension. So May 22nd, 10 a.m., Look forward to it. Thank you. Please rise and greet those around you. Let us now recite the prayer to the Holy Spirit. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. You do alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to be true to life, and not stray from the way of truth to what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at our table where saints and sinners are friends. Way to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Good morning. Good morning, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. Today it reminds us the joy that God brings to our lives, that God always awaiting us with an open arms to embrace us and to forgive us. That joy is bring to all of us as we acknowledge that we are all sinners. The message you have today is that reconciliation and conversion is all about our lives. It's all about Jesus. Jesus has come to this world to give us his life, his life abundantly. Coming together as God's family, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's love and mercy. I confess to Almighty God 
and to and you, you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, the ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who through you are word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemnly celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Can I have the children come forward for the children's liturgy of the word? Okay, guys, who can tell me what a parable is? No? <laughs> okay. Parable is a story that Jesus uses to teach us, okay? Today, we're going to hear one of the more famous ones. It's about the prodigal son. Somebody goes off and decides to not pay attention to what mom and dad told him to do, and then comes back home and says, boy, I messed up. And guess what dad said? Welcome home. He's glad to see you. Think that's a good thing? You're smiling. So you get to carry that on. And you, sir, can lead the way with that. We send you for to give A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgal, on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened bread and parched grain. On that same day after Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In burdened pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He reap 
fresh is my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths, for his name's sake, even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciled the world to himself in Christ not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. One does not live on bread alone, but, but on, on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger said to the father, Father, Give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. 
and he longed to eat his fill of the pods of which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up, and he went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and he has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field and on his way back as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called out to one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, look, all these years I served you and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fattened calf. He said to him, my son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. There is joy when one of your brothers return back home, return back to God. The message Jesus shared to us today is the message of love. That he has come to this world so that this world might have life, life abundantly. The story of the prodigal sons, the two sons, the elder, uh, elder brother and the prodigal son, is the story of each one of us because it touches our way of life. Sometimes we, we act like the Pharisees and the scribes, and sometimes we act like the prodigal son. And especially when we recognize our weaknesses and when we recognize that we need God's mercy. Today I want to share with you something which happened two years ago. My brother has seven children. And one of his sons, he always said, this is one of, actually every time he's trying to correct him, he goes this way. One day when he was, he finished secondary education, he came and said, Dad, I don't want to proceed with my studies. And he said, what do you want to do? He said, I don't know. 
So he said he wants to go anywhere he might go, and he will find something what he will do. The mother, she was not happy because she knew that her son is going to perish. And the dad, because he was tired, he said, no, I don't care. You just go. So he left that day. They didn't know where he has gone. So he disappeared. So they sent me a message, Father, we want to let you know our son. We don't know where is he. After one month, six months, one year. And two years ago, he was there outside for two years without any communication. One day, early in the morning, they had someone knocking the door. And the mother went there, opened her only child. She said, welcome. And he went straight. He knows where he was going. And then he slept there. They didn't ask him. But they recognized that he has changed. He was, but now he was thin. And he was wearing one sandal blue and the other sandal red. So they recognized, yeah, something has gone somewhere. So they waited him until when he woke up. And they said, what are we going to do? Because he has not even tell us whether he was coming or what. So they called me, and I said, don't ask him. Let him, he will share what is going on. So they left him. They gave him good food. And that day, he didn't share with them. The second day, after one week, and my brother said, he has not said anything. I say, what is your problem? Let him, because he has come back home. One day after three weeks, he started crying telling them his story. He stayed what he suffered and what he encountered when he was there. He said even there were some other days he couldn't even make his meal. And he was suffering. And he decided, no, let me go back home. And he didn't have even the money to pay for his fare. So he had to ask those people whether if they can take him. And thank God they did it. So he came and he said, now I'm asking for your forgiveness because for what I have done. The parents didn't say because they didn't know even what to ask him. So I told them, let him decide what he's going to do. So just give him moral support, pray for him, give him good meal. And then after three months, he asked his parents, I want to go back to school. I want to tell you, last year, he started again his a new journey of life. Now he is now finishing advanced secondary education. What does it mean to us in this story? Jesus is sharing to us that God's mercy is always for all of us. God is available for all of us. He has extended his hands awaiting for all of us. But he wants us to know that he loves us. And he wants us to acknowledge that we are all sinners. We live in a world that no one is perfect. The parents are not perfect. The children are not perfect. We are all struggling, but God always embraces us as we come forward and recognize his mercy. Today, as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent, and that's why we are wearing this color that's waiting for that joy, that joy God has shared with us, that he's always filled joy for those people who come back to him. Are we ready to return back to Jesus as he always awaiting us? The story of the prodigal son is our story because it brings us to our attention 
that God has sent his only begotten son to bring us to new life. And that new life is Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ is always gives us strength and healing. Do we recognize his presence? Do we recognize his love? Do we recognize his mercy? Today, as we continue to prepare for Easter, let us open our heart and recognize that God always is so merciful to us. God always is embracing our love, and he wants us to forgive one another as he did for the prodigal son. The elder son didn't want even to see his brother because of what he was created in his life. Remember, no one is perfect. The elder son had his own struggles in life, but he didn't want even to shake hands with his brother, simply because he was feeling bad that his father has brought back his only brother. What does it mean? He wants us to forgive each other. He wants us to recognize that we are not living in, the, in heaven, we are living this world, the world which is having a lot of things which we have to acknowledge that we are all sinners. When we acknowledge that we are sinners, we can embrace the love of God and each one can recognize his position or her position. God is good all the time and all the times God is good. Amen. Please stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the one good God, the Son of God, Lord of the prophet, the God of the Jews, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him I'm spoken to him. Of God's doing for us salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and become one. God seeks the truth of the Son of God. The Son of God, 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 the I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Father, the Son, the Lord, the Son, the Lord, the Son, the Lord, the Father, and the Son, and the Son, and the Lord, the Father, and the Son, the Lord, the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son. I forgive us one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, so that I go for all the people of the nation of the earth, for the world, for the world, for the world. Trusting the goodness of God, we offer now our petitions. That Pope Francis and our church leaders be models of mercy and forgiveness to those who stray from the path of righteousness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all the faithful become beacons of light, drawing in the many who have lost their way and welcoming those who were once lost but now are found. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world leaders, may they be unified and strengthened by God's grace for the protection of the most vulnerable, especially the poor, the homeless, the aged, the unborn, and for those who caught in the midst of war, especially the Ukrainian people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we place our sick and suffering under your care that you give them strength both mentally and physically, especially those affected by the COVID pandemic, those names of chronically ill listed in the bulletin, and for those names we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they find peaceful rest in your kingdom. 
and uh, for our weekend mass intentions, Tony Canu, Mark Simonis, Dick Mower, and Steve Genovese. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join in reciting the Ascension Parish Anniversary Prayer. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we, we praise and thank you for the past 50, 50 years. years. Your, Your grace and spirit have enabled our parish, parish to proclaim the word, celebrate the Eucharist, and serve our local community. In thanksgiving, we pray for all those parishioners who set the parish foundation, and for all those who throughout the years have joined us in our mission, in our celebrations, or have sought our help. Please continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, so that you will always be missionary disciples who are joyful expressions of your Son within our parish and into our community. We boldly proclaim that Jesus is alive in our parish, welcoming the lost and leading us all to new life in him. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, as one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we focus our minds and hearts on others this Lenten season. We ask you to hear our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Just a reminder, the collection baskets are by the exit as you leave the sanctuary. Thank you for your continued financial support. Come back to me with all your hearts. Don't let me keep us apart. Trace to man who straight and tall. So must we. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as it's fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is true, right, and just to adjutant our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, our Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out without end, we are claimed. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightfully gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly employ you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
and Joseph her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Barry our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember your servant, Mark Simonis, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sup of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
You must rejoice, my son, for your brother was dead and has come to life. He was lost, is found. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. If you are a newcomer to our parish or a visitor, we would like to welcome you. In order to do that, I would ask you to stand, tell us your name, and where you are from. Do we have any brave souls this morning? Well, then, uh, a couple other things I need to pass along. Um, first and foremost is the Justice and Peace Committee does an excellent job of bringing information that we need to know as Catholics to, to us uh, in the form of the forums. And we have one this coming Wednesday, and it's talking about the environment. And I hope you'll be able to make time in your schedule to attend that. Um, yesterday, I was sitting in a group, small group, and we were talking about a Matthew Kelly book and four of the traits of, of Catholics. Generosity is, was one of the four. I was surprised to, to hear that, but uh, I hadn't thought of it, but uh, what I'm leading up to is the Bishop's Appeal. Um, we're only just under halfway through what we've been asked to contribute, and I know this is a generous parish, so please, uh, with prayerful consideration, consider what you can do to help the bishop out. He helps us. We get some of that money back. It helps the retired priest, and it helps the seminarians, and we're adopting a couple of them from this past summer, so there, there's good reasons to, to contribute if you are able. Thank you. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. Save us, O Lord, carry us back. Rouse your power and come. Rescue your people, show us your face, bring us back. O shepherd of Israel, hear us, return and we shall be saved. Arise, O Lord, hear our cries, O Lord, bring us back. Save us, O Lord, carry us back, rouse your people and come. Rescue your people, show us your face, bring us back, bring us back. Have a great day, everyone.